Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, bringing you podcast 125 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. Well, loyal patrons of the Tavern, as I've stated before, I have made my glorious return back to Japan. Uh, I will be here for significantly longer uh, th- than I previously was. Nevertheless, I will do my best to continue uh, all my podcasts and vlogs and every other series I have going. And now that I got a little bit of downtime before a lot of the, the hard stuff begins, I do want to go ahead and talk with you guys uh, about a topic that, you know, honestly, I really didn't want to go ahead and talk about at this point in the year. But you know what? Um, it's something a little bit special I want to kind of give you guys. I mean, typically I'm against this when people do it, but you know what? Just for the occasion, let's go have a little bit of fun. And specifically, uh, I'm talking about the next season of Super Sentai, which in this case will be the 40th anniversary. Now, again, in principle, I, I usually don't like people talking about, oh, what's next Sentai and stuff. Typically, people do it when, you know, rumors are starting to go ahead and come out or they really don't like this season. Uh, I do remember when uh, Tokuger, you know, halfway through, I think a lot of people were like, geez, what's the next season? Can we get on to it and stuff? And, um, you know, whether a season's good or not, I think you need to just kind of enjoy that and get into that and really not worry about the next one. But given that, you know, the 40th anniversary is going to be, I guess, this major thing uh, to a lot of the fans, I I think it's worth really talking about and discussing what the potentials and possibilities of a 40th uh, season is. Because I don't think they're going to necessarily treat this like any other season. They're certainly going to do something uh, about it. And, you know, the 40th anniversary was essentially earlier this year from the, the date of broadcast. What we're going to be celebrating next year is the 40th Sentai team, in, in essence. Um, and even this year, when you know the, the date of the 40th anniversary hit, they were originally going to go ahead and, of course, do that episode in which... They had, um, you know, the three ninja red ninja rangers get together. Aka Rangers shows up, and you know, Ninja Day, I believe, is what they called it. Unfortunately, that was pushed back due to, well, unfortunate real world events. Um, nevertheless, of course, it happened. Um, there was that special anniversary, and I think upcoming. They are going to do something significant. They are going to do something special. However, nobody really knows, unless you're a Toei, as far as what's going to be happening. And I would definitely like to take this opportunity to give you guys my thoughts on, I guess, where we are with the anniversary seasons, the anniversary specials, and what I believe they should do for the 40th anniversary, kind of based on their track record. And what I mean by based on their track record is, I've been less than impressed with what they've been doing with the anniversary seasons. And that's really starting from the 25th anniversary with Gal Ranger. Pretty much everything prior to Gal Ranger, you know, I don't think they really put a lot of effort in tying the series into its past roots. Granted, we got things like Super Sentai World and we had the these episode zero basically of Turbo Ranger where we had the previous Sentai teams kind of cheer on the Turbo Rangers and what was, at the time, I believe, the 10th anniversary. Um, well, again, it gets, it gets a little fishy when you, you know, retroactively put in the continuity, because, again, at that time, um, Go Ranger and Jacka were not officially part of Super Sentai at the time, but I digress. But I really want to go ahead and talk about the way modern Sentai has looked at its anniversary seasons and anniversary specials and what we can essentially learn from that. Um, again, the first one we have is the Gal Ranger 25th anniversary. Now, in general, Gal Ranger itself um, really didn't have anything to go ahead and do with the anniversary, the 25th anniversary of Super Sentai itself. It was a self contained season. Uh, that had its own story, its own characters, and so forth. But they did have the Gal Ranger Super Sentai uh, movie DVD special. I don't even know if it was released in theaters, although I'm sure somebody out there will be able to tell me if it was. 
Um, but in that particular episode, we had, you know, the Gal Rangers learning about the history of Sentai. We had all the Red Rangers show up, as well as a veteran team of five previous Rangers, and a really lackluster battle with all the Red Mecha up to that particular point. But I think for what it was at that particular time, it was a decent product to put out there. Now, when the 30th anniversary came in with Bokanger, um, I think things were a little bit different uh, in that particular season uh, because, again, the, the season itself really didn't tie into to anything. There were visual motifs. Um, you know, the, the Bokanger did have uh, features on their helmets that were reminiscent of Turbo Ranger. Um, they did have a lot of the villains and the mecha that were supposedly based on designs of previous um, incarnations of the series, robots and characters and so forth. However, for the life of me, I still don't see how the Fear Cats, and, and I don't know what their Japanese equivalent is off the top of my head, how they even looked like the Thunder Megazord and Mega Tiger Zord. Um, I just didn't really see that in the design. Nevertheless, um, we had those things running through the season. And of course, we, we had the Bokanger Super Sentai movie in which we have the introduction of Aka Red. We have yet another veteran ranger team come in. And in, in a sense, basically, you know, this is where, you know, our Mercury Ranger, Boken Silver, he goes out and learns of the Sentai history. And it's kind of an odd special in the fact that they're all kind of busy with their own lives and, and own pursuits to become Sentai heroes. But then they all kind of come together and learn a lesson or something. It's something to go ahead and talk about at a later time. But nevertheless, it was, I guess it was serviceable for what it was doing at its time. Now... Fast forward to the 35th anniversary, and we got, what, what else? Gokaiger. Now, Gokaiger, in a lot of ways, did a lot of things right, and I think a lot of things wrong. But that's normal of any season, and particularly when you have a new idea um, for a season. And, you know, here's the thing about Gokaiger that I, I will say hel helps it. Um, and I'm not by any means saying it's a bad season, but... I think to make a good anniversary season is that you have to tie into the franchise, yet be able to stand on your own. And Gokaiger did that. They were able to stand on their own and tell their own story about Captain Marvelous and his crew and their battle against the Zanyak and, and the Empire. That story was told. We had character development. Um, we had interesting stories with them. But in the background was the, the Sentai universe as a whole. They're meeting their different senpai, they're learning different lessons, uh, uh, unlocking new powers and new zords, all that were previously tied into the previous history. But I would say if I had to pick a failing of the season, um, j just to go ahead and point out one, and again there are a couple out there, I would say that the way the Sentai 199 movie was done um, was not done to the best effect possible. Um, now, as I said in a previous video, what this should have been is Go Ranger versus Go Kaiger. That should have been the movie where the current Sentai, who was rough around the edges and really wasn't considered a Sentai by some of the Senpai because they were pirates, they were self-motivated their history was not dedicated to uh protecting the planet earth they were, didn't really care about earth the only reason they were there is because they were looking for the tr the greatest treasure in the universe and they had to go ahead and learn a lesson that um you know they need to protect the earth that it's worth saving that they are now part of this great legacy that those powers that they've gained uh, mean something and the people of earth mean something they had to learn all those lessons uh, throughout the series. And it seemed natural to me that you would want to go ahead and tie them in with the very first Sentai, you know, get, the, the, get those original actors and have them teach these young pups a lesson about what it means to, to go ahead and save Earth because they, they were the first ones to really do that um, and, and, you know, turn to these new guys who, you know, who are they? You just have our powers, you're not really a Sentai, which is not really what it was all about, but that was a consistent theme that was going through, you know, the subtext of, of a lot of the episodes. But what we got with that was actually the Gokaiger versus Gosager crossover episode, or crossover movie, with the backdrop of 
you know, fighting these ranger teams and all the Mecha and the Black Cross King uh, returning to the to re- returning to exact his revenge, not on the Go Ranger, but in Sentai in general, which. And to my knowledge, and again, correct me if I'm wrong on this, he only ever faced the Go Ranger. I think maybe he he faced Jacka in the crossover, but his motivation always seemed kind of odd to me. And and I think again, the failing of that is that what that movie is is trying to be too too many things because again, it's it's got to be a Go Kaiju movie. It's got to be a crossover with the Go Sager. It has to be this anniversary special. It has to be all these different things. And I don't think it particularly succeeded on that because again we're having them cross over and learn their lesson with the go sager which was the previous ranger team and it's not really about go sager it's not the go sager go sager really teaching them a particular lesson or tying in the, the history of sentai it's just the most recent team who inexplicably um had returned to earth and were still on earth and there's a lot of you know continuity issues to go ahead and talk about that at a later time nevertheless i think the ultimate point i'm getting at is that the movie was not well served by putting the ghost sager in there it would have been better served if it was again the go ranger meeting the go kaiger which leads me finally after 11 so minutes um to my idea of what I think the 40th anniversary should be. I personally think that the 40th anniversary should be a sequel to Go Ranger. That this should be Go Ranger 2.0, Go Ranger Beta, Go Ranger The Next Generation. Um, Basically, what I would like to go ahead and see is a modern update of Go Ranger where we have five heroes that are the new Go Ranger. We still have Aka Ranger, Owl Ranger, and so forth. And they are the successors to the current Go Ranger. Now first let me go ahead and stop and why I, I keep bringing up Go Ranger here. And it's, it's kind of an odd thing when you think about it in context to what we do with the Power Rangers. Think about this for a second. Anytime that we talk about the Power Ranger series in general... What do people typically think about? They think about the first incarnation. They think of Mighty Morphin. And people always try to find a way to tie Mighty Morphin into the history of the Power Rangers. So, for example, when we had uh, the 15th anniversary with Operation Overdrive, of course, we had to have Adam come back as the Black Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Uh, Forever Red had Jason come back in there as the Red Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Um, And then, of course, we get to, you know, Super Mega Force. You know, what's everybody interested in seeing in that? Everybody's interested in seeing the Mighty Morphin uh, Power Ranger suits come back. We we brought Tommy back uh, to be in a episode basically the point i'm getting at is that for whatever reason we're always going back to that very first power ranger series as being the most significant the most influential they have to be in the anniversary series there has to be a reference to them because they are the first they are the best or, or whatever we always have that tie-in now contrary to that super sentai does not really do that Yes, Aka Ranger does appear from, or excuse, yeah, Aka Ranger appears from time to time, but bringing up Go Ranger in any significant uh, context really isn't something that's discussed within the within Super Sentai. I mean, it, it seems to me that Aka Ranger always kind of appears in promotional materials and all that uh, whenever there's an anniversary coming up or when they do something special with books or DVDs or something. But we never specifically tie back into the Go Ranger series. I mean, that's why in the 199 movie, I thought it was kind of odd that we had the actor for Aka Ranger, but he doesn't actually make a physical appearance within the movie he does a kind of like in the white void um you know him talking to the the two most recent super sentai teams but a villain who has personal ties to aqua ranger doesn't really interact with the villain And, and by what i mean is if you all recall from the very first episode of go ranger the black cross army invades aqua rangers military base kills everybody on the base, including his brother, and that's what leads him and the four others to become the Go Ranger. Um, 
And that's something that I'm sure he exacted his revenge when the Black Cross was killed, but for this enemy to be resurrected and find that one of his greatest enemies is still alive, it's it's kind of a cheat. It's kind of like, you know, bringing Rita Repulsa back, or here's a better example, bringing Goldar back to life, uh, only to never face Jason in combat, where he always did feel that Jason was, you know, his personal rival. It kind of shifted a little bit towards Tommy at the end, but again, you, you kind of get my idea there, is that you, you can't bring back a villain. It's like bringing the Joker into a DC story, but he's really adamant about fighting the Flash and not fighting Batman. You see where I'm going with that? So... And that's my little rant. I keep getting off subject right here. But I. Th- but what I'm trying to go ahead and say is that we need to go back to Go Ranger. We have to go back to its roots in some some fashion. And I think the idea of having a Go Ranger 2.0 would be the best way to go. And, and this is kind of the way I'm thinking about it, is that we want to tie into the franchise and celebrate the 40 years. And I think the way to do that is to go back to the very first team and make a sequel to that uh, of sorts. Now, you can. What I, what I think you should go ahead and do is you should bring back the original actors, the, the ones that are surviving, that they're wanting to go ahead and show up, of course, uh, to now be military commanders within their own right. And they want to start a new generation of Go Ranger for whatever reason, um, because the, the, there's a new Black Cross army coming, there's a new threat, and they feel that they need to step in, that, they're, that they are getting too old to be, uh, you know, Go Ranger, and that they need to pass their powers on to a new generation of heroes, a new generation to take over. And you can make that, you know, their children. Children, uh, new army recruits. Heck, I would love to see a kind of like a ragtag bunch of misfits um, that don't necessarily appreciate the history of Sentai or the sacrifices that the Go Ranger went into. And I think by doing this, you certainly tie it into the history of the series and add new perspective on it. Because I can't think of a single Sentai where we had a previous mentor come in and give powers to a new generation. It would almost be like Dino uh, Thunder in a particular sense, how we had a previous Power Ranger come in and become the leader of the new Dino team and teach the lessons that you know he learned to them so that they don't have to go ahead and learn it on their own. And for all the problems, in my opinion, with, with Dino Thunder, I think that's one of the elements that's very strong about it, is that, yes, you got the recycled dinosaur, dinosaur motif, but you do tie it into the history of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with, again, arguably the most popular Power Ranger of them all being the Mentor. So I can certainly see something where uh, Aka Ranger comes in as the Mentor, recruits five five new uh, teenagers or adults or whatever they are in Sentai this particular season and giving them the Go Ranger powers or new Go Ranger powers um, so that they can take on the mantle and fight, fight a new enemy. And... The reason I, I, I go this particular route is because to do it another way doesn't seem as interesting. I mean, obviously, there are a hundred different ways you can go ahead and do that. But I think the, the two most obvious ways I think people would go ahead and do it would be do a 40th season that ties in somehow, much like we did with the Bokanger and Gal Ranger, and save a special 40th movie, and who knows what the plot about that's going to be. Or essentially do... Uh, Go Kyger Part 2. And I've actually heard people kind of clamoring for, uh, for that, is that they want to see the return of the Go Kyger, that they get new Ranger keys and they have to do something else. Um, w- which is fine, I guess, but, you know, we've already told their story. Uh, unless they are handing off to a new generation, I just don't find that particularly interesting. And I think a lot of people are bringing it up just because they want more Ranger keys. They want to see... Um, you know, more of the old Zords turned into new toys and more cameos. I mean, I think people just love Gokaiger so much that they didn't want to see it end, so they want to go ahead and see, um, you know, more more Gokaiger. And I just don't think doing it either of those ways is particularly interesting um, because I think for the 40th anniversary, I mean, how many television shows, no matter where in the world, get to the 40th anniversary? I mean, heck, I mean, the, the they, they've been on, you know... 
they've been on longer than a lot of American television shows uh, have. I mean, think of long-running TV shows in the United States. I mean, what do you think of? You think of, like, The Simpsons and something like that, and, and I don't even know what season The Simpsons are anymore. They're, what, about to hit their 30th or, or something like that? Some crazy number, who knows, and all that. Um, but for it to be on for 40 years, I really think you need to step away from the formula you usually have and try something a little bit different. Try that sequel series. That's something I've been talking about for a long time on the Tavers. Let's do a sequel. Let's continue the adventures, but, you know, a story worth telling. And I think for our very first team who's getting up there in age, I mean, we're talking about actors that are in their 60s and 70s, uh, a show that, you know, many young viewers may not uh, be aware of. You know, take that opportunity to pass it on to the next generation generation do something like batman beyond basically where you have an old and decrepit character who just can't fight the good fight anymore and has to give it to somebody else and i don't necessarily mean it like the burden that you would for the shinkanger or power ranger samurai but something in the case of you know we need somebody else who wants to go ahead and do this uh who should do this you know um to, to go ahead and save the world i mean i would love to see that where the you know like much in the way Gokaiger started with the the legendary war and by no means we should do the legendary war again i mean maybe somewhere down the line or something else like that but i think for the 40th i don't think we need it again so close to the last time but have it be the last adventure of the go ranger the, the one last hurrah this is their last mission together and whatever happens on this mission, they have to break up as a team, whether they feel that they are too old. Maybe somebody is killed. Maybe they've crossed a line they said that they would never cross uh, the, the results to their breakup or something. Something happens. There is no more Go Ranger. And then Aka Ranger or somebody else, who, you know, if you want to try Our Ranger or the other actors, uh, take it upon themselves to say, hey, we need to keep this going. This can't be the end. Make, yeah, make it the end of the, not only the Go Ranger, maybe the end of Sentai. Maybe that's something um, that's happening that Super Sentai are in danger of extinction or something like that. I mean, heck, you know, here just off the top of my head without any forethought what if somebody was either kidnapping or killing off all the previous sentai so it's not that they lost their powers or anything maybe there is a sentai hunter if you will that's siphoning them and their powers for some evil plot and the only way that you can stop them is to send in these new go rangers and that's your whole pitch for the series or something um oh and i will point out that if you do have a new team of go ranger Give them new outfits, like update them to look a little bit modern, a little bit of modifications. I think that's something that, that definitely should be done for those of you who are curious about that. But but certainly, I think to condense all my thoughts right here, Go Ranger was the first, 40th anniversary is coming up, and I don't think Super Sentai does enough to tie into that particular season as much as it tries to tie into other seasons, particularly the more recent ones. And yes... I will say, I, I, this is my response, because I know people are going to go ahead and say, they're going to say, well, the new seasons are more marketable, they sell toys, the, the younger viewers will recognize them because they're more recent. I get that logic and everything, that may be the way they're doing it, but... Again, it's the 40th anniversary. You, you just can't say, hey, we're just going to tie into the last five or six years because it's what our target demographic is familiar with. You really have to dig deep and go into the history of the entire series. And I really think that means going back to where it began. Um, that maybe this should be a more down-to-earth particular season. You know, none of this uh, going out in space and 15 different power-ups. You know, give them... Uh, you know, the, the military and spy tech tools they originally have. I mean, heck, we always look at Super Sentai, their first battles are usually played before the screen, and they're always, um, you know, morphed and have their powers and everything, you know. But look at Go Ranger, their very first mission they did without their powers and it was saving children and all that kind of stuff. You know, have something like that again. Go back to its roots. No more of this, you know, magic and imagination and stuff, which is fine, but again, for the anniversary, I think we need to remind the audience what Super Sentai originally was and how far it has come along. Uh, and that's something that a lot of the younger viewers don't realize. I mean, they see Aka Ranger and they know he was the first, but what do they actually really know about Aka Ranger? What do they know about the Go Rangers? And give this 
season the opportunity to examine what Sentai is as a whole and why it started with Go Ranger, why it became such a phenomenon in this country that's been on for so many years. So I guess those are my kind of, kind of general thoughts with it. Again, I really didn't plan anything out as far as beyond the concept of, you know, bringing the Go Ranger back into the equation. And again, by no means I, am I a Go Ranger fan. I just kind of think it's odd that they are not... Uh, thought of in time, you know, they're not thought of as much as tying into the franchise as Mighty Morphin is, but it seems like a natural thing to go ahead and do is to, you know, make this, again, I keep using this reference, but uh, make this the Batman Beyond of Super Sentai, make this the new generation taking on the new mantle, let's have a new Aka Ranger, let's have a new Owl Ranger, let's have uh, them have a, a Megazord for the first time, based on the original 70s uh, designs and all that. Let's do something creative with that. We don't need another Legendary War. We don't need another Gokaiger. We don't need um, them using previous powers and all that. We don't need a just a simple season that makes visual references to the past. And we don't need a movie that unites all the teams together or the two most recent teams. I mean, could you guys imagine that if we did the 40th anniversary team and the Ninja team together and then in the background Oh yeah, there's this bigger thing going on with Megazords and previous uh, Rangers and all that kind of stuff. It would seem kind of odd to, to go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of like just over, so a few thoughts that I had in regards to the 40th anniversary. I kind of doubt they may do this, but uh, you know, as we get closer to that, who knows what we'll, we'll go ahead and learn. Who knows of what interesting season uh, we may have out there. But it's certainly something I would like to see, and frankly, anything they do, I would love to go ahead and see, because I'm a diehard fan of both series, uh, Super Sentai and Power Rangers alike, and I just want to see something well done. But uh, what do you guys think of my idea here? Should we do Go, uh, Go Ranger 2.0? Should we tie it back into the original series? Or what would you guys like to actually see from a 40th anniversary? I'm very curious on your thoughts on that. Because it's, you know, it's it's never going to be about what us uh, fans are always into. It's probably going to be what corporate decisions are made, uh, whether they understand the audience or not. But I want to know what my audience thinks uh, in regards to 40th anniversary of Sentai. So leave your comments down below. I would certainly love to go ahead and hear them. And until next time, I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good day. And the tavern is now closed. <laughs>